Hey friends, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to Hot News. We got a lot to go through on this Saturday, so let's go ahead and jump into it after I tell you that today's video is brought to you by our 200,000 subscriber giveaway. We recently passed it. We're at like 216 now, but thanks to you guys and big thanks to Wootware, we are giving away an RTX 2080 Ti to one lucky winner in the entire giveaway, as well as a one terabyte NVMe SSD. So if you wanna win a 2080 Ti and a one terabyte NVMe, me, links in the description for you to check out the giveaway, enter in, and then you can actually retrace your life because that's what everybody wants to do anyways. So with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about the point of today's video. This, this is super frustrating, especially because of how everything went down. And that's why today's video is titled, Damn It AMD, because they really pulled the rug out from under people as well as putting it over people's eyes afterwards. You know, you just yank it and throw it on. That's how you do things. Apparently, if you're AMD, and I'm talking about the supposed price cut that came to the Vega 56 right before the 1660 Ti launched and all of those reviews came out. Obviously, this would be AMD's attempt to get in the spotlight from NVIDIA, and they sure did that. There were so many people in our review yesterday saying, well, now that the Vega 56 is only $280, you would choose that, right? And the answer would be yes. And in fact, with this price cut that came out, we had recorded a new intro to our video to put a disclaimer that, holy crap, AMD cut the price and made everything really wonky on us, so the Vega 56 is the best value now. But that's not true, not at all. So that $280 price is only available on one specific model at a couple of retailers in America. It looks like it's only Newegg. Uh, it looks like Mine Factory actually got it for a similar price of 270 euro, but it's out of stock. And if you listen to reports from somebody like Jay's Two Cents, since I didn't get this press release, he says that as soon as the press release came out, the card was already out of stock. You can see here, it's not available. The $280 Vega 56 would be phenomenal. It would throw the 1660 Ti out because on, in most games, Vega 56 was 4% faster in our testing. And then in other games, it's phenomenally faster to the tune of like 10 to 20% in depending depending on what uh, API is being used. So Vega 56 at $280 completely changes the entire discussion, but it was a press release by AMD for one card at one retailer that's completely out of stock. And upon us hearing this, I actually reached out to my contacts at retailers to ask them, yo, is this actually happening? And they were like, no, no, this isn't This isn't actually happening. Our Vega 56 prices aren't being cut from AMD. They're actually staying the same price. And in fact, uh, several different models have been end of life by their manufacturers. So that means that this could just be an AMD's last dying gas to make sure that Vega gets out there. Steal a little bit of thunder from the 1660 Ti, but all in all, if you go on Newegg right now, most Vega 56s are over $400, which is the price to performance analysis that we used. At $400, the Vega 56 is a dumb buy. 1660 Ti makes a whole lot more sense. At $280, it's the perfect graphics card, but it's not happening. It's there for one retailer, one price, one model, not an across the board cut, not something that's actually happening for a whole bunch of people. And it would have been entirely stupid for AMD to do this because it would just completely obsoletize the RX 590, which just came out in November, which you can see right here is going for $260. So AMD didn't do this. They let people know that a card that usually goes on sale on Newegg is on sale for $280 and is no longer on sale and probably wasn't even on sale when they sent out the email because it was already out of stock. Some people have said that they've gotten this model for $330. If you can get a Vega 56 for $330, I could probably say, yes, get that over the 1660 Ti, uh, but then, uh, then you'd probably wanna get an RTX 2060. So from the looks of things, from everything that I've talked to people who are in contact with AMD, and from the fact that uh, it's only one model and Jay's Two Cents got clarification from AMD that, yeah, this isn't a price cut, this never happened. AMD just really tried to get some promotional material out of people right before the 1660 Ti. It definitely happened and good work on them. They, they completely got people talking about it. It's all in our comments about the video yesterday, but dang, no, it didn't happen. 
and it's not happening. There's no $280 Vega 56 unless you're buying used. So that's that's the little rant to start off this AMD with the marketing tactics that were effective and kind of just made it so that everybody looked like an idiot when they compared the 1660 Ti to the Vega 56 because the pricing was completely different than it actually was. But let's talk quickly about the 1660 Ti. Obviously our video came out yesterday. I do want to give a brief mention to the fact that we released two videos in a row. One says don't buy stuff and then the next one says buy this graphics card. I did say in that first video that wait, wait a day, because the 1660 Ti was coming out. So it, on, on that one hand, I was completely correct. The other things such as RAM price dropping or the Pentium chip coming out, those still stand. But the 1660 Ti, I told you to wait for that. It was only a day wait. Um, yeah, so. But then also, since I didn't have the information from NVIDIA directly about why it was called the 1660 Ti, Gamers Nexus in the review got a comment from NVIDIA on it, and it's the dumbest thing ever. The 16, they said, because the chip is TU116 and 16 is closer to 20 than 1160 is, and it Turing is closer to the 20 series than it is to the 10 series, we'll call it the 1660 Ti. That's just dumb. That's the stupidest thing because the, the rumored GTX 1650, by that measure, since it's on the TU117 chip, it should be called the 1750. By that exact same uh, the logic. Like that's not happening at all. That is so stupid. And I know I did promise that if, if uh, you know, the 1660 Ti was its real name, I would try to break a graphics card over my head. I am not okay with that stupid freaking name. I don't think Nvidia is dumb enough to name it that way. There's no reason to do that. Where's the Ti even coming from? What is this r rumor about this naming scheme? That is the dumbest name on the face of the earth. And Nvidia, if you name it that way, I probably will have to break a graphics card over my head because of your sheer dumbness. But I don't think that's gonna happen, so that's okay. So I've got a GTX 1060 right here, so. Ow! <laughs> ah, I don't think I can do it, guys. Oh, I'm hearing it crack, though. It's definitely bent. Nope, not happening. I don't have a strong enough head, and this card isn't long enough. The fact that it's short probably doesn't help. Uh, it was dead anyways, so I will say that. It was, it was, not, uh, it was not a healthy card in the first place. I didn't just break a, a brand new. GTX 1060, so. And then dumb rumor, uh, GTX 1180 is apparently spotted in some HP documentation. Uh, given NVIDIA's statement on why they call it the 1660, I don't think this is gonna happen. The 1180, doubt this is gonna happen. That probably is just a, a misspelling. There might be a 1680, there probably won't be, especially with how badly the 1660 Ti kind of ruins the whole RTX ray tracing DLSS argument. It kind of makes it, obsolete, so for them to release anything above a 1660 Ti in the GTX format would probably just kind of demolish the sales of the RTX cards. And considering Nvidia's branding has been pretty much solely on RTX as of late, I really don't think that we're gonna get this, and it's just a typo, in my opinion. But then also in more bad NVIDIA naming stuff, we get MX200 series GPUs, the 250 and the 230 being released and announced. Cool. Why not call it the MX165 and 163? Hmm? NVIDIA? Why? Why not? You could have. You didn't. And then there's leaks of Intel's latest Iris Plus graphics, the 940 with the Gen 11 architecture, actually making it so that it beats out the Vega 11 integrated graphics. It's not quite what we're looking for for Intel Z, but coming in on an integrated chip, beating out what AMD has, this is some good moves by Intel. Hopefully we get more information as time goes on. Then more information on Huawei. They, are, they put up a billboard, which looks to uh, kind of demonstrate their folding phone. This one actually looks looks a little bit better than what the Galaxy Fold is, especially since you still get the full screen real estate across the top and on the side, as you can see there, if this is the actual leaked image and that's what it's supposed to be. If not, then who cares? Then Virgin Galactic sent their first passenger into space because they had recently tested the fact, or not space, subspace, excuse me. So they went up 55.85 miles, which is below the boundary of 62 miles for space, but it was the company's chief astronaut instructor who was able to go up in the plane with the pilots, but passenger ride on a subspace supersonic flight, pretty dang cool. And then Samsung, speaking of phones and Virgin Galactic, that I, just, I did, did not order this properly. Anyways, Bixby button, for anybody who hated the Bixby button on their previous Samsung devices, you can now remap them. Samsung's not being turds about this anymore because you could do it with the S10. Now you can do it with all of the other Galaxy phones that have 
Bixby buttons. And then Fortnite, in case you thought it was dead. It's not. The first Fortnite World Cup is taking place on April 13th. Uh, there's going to be open qualifiers online. Then there's going to be a live action, not live action. It's going to be in-person tournament with the winner m making $3 million for the first place. And there's going to be $30 million in the World Cup finals. Considering that Epic has committed up to $100 million in esports winnings, this is a good start. $30 million for the first giant World Cup. Not bad. And then DRAM manufacturer SK Hynix has a announced that they have $107 billion to start up opening up new fabrication facilities. Hopefully this will allow us to never go into that deep depressing DRAM issue that we had last year where the prices were three times as high as they were supposed to be. SK Hynix, you're our only hope. Probably not. And then let's talk about YouTube for a second. So there has been a lot of discussion on copy striking community guideline strikes. Well, YouTube is trying to make it somewhat easier for everybody. Starting on February 25th, if you receive a community guideline strike for the first time, it will actually just be a warning. Previously, what happened with community guideline strikes was that it affected your channel immediately. You weren't able to live stream as well as losing several other features. And it turns out that YouTube thought that was too harsh and now they're pulling it back just a little bit. So this is good news from YouTube who actually can serve warnings before they give us the first up penalty of what's happening, especially since in a lot of cases people who break the community guidelines aren't fully aware of how the guidelines were broken even if they are told how it's like a subjective issue in many different instances so finding out that you have a warning and then you can correct it from there is a good thing in my opinion so thank you YouTube for that and then if you've been using WinRAR for any point in the last 14 years and never really got past a free trial you need to update it because there is a bug that allows certain scripts to be executed on your computer and then you are then vulnerable for remote control by somebody else. And this is in all of the versions for, used for the last 14 years because of how WinRAR actually does the compression and decompression. It allows that there's something in there that you can inject and then bad news bears. So if you use WinRAR, get fix it and then it turns out that the nintendo switch might be actually getting access to xbox game pass to allow them to play the xbox video games several of the games that have been quoted to be able to come to this program are forza halo and gears of war so if you ever wanted to play those on the go in a mobile form factor it might be happening on the switch sometime soon obviously this is still just rumors so we'll have to see if this ever actually comes to pass but would be pretty cool. And then Metro Exodus, let's talk about that. There's a new patch that's coming out that supposedly sharpens up the DLSS, which looked like you smeared Vaseline onto the screen. And because you lower the resolution, then you upscale it using the AI, which allows you to get faster performance, but at the cost of visual fidelity, which kind of goes against the whole argument of RTX technology is supposed to improve the visual fidelity. And then you get worse visual fidelity because you're using all the features. Anyways, the new patch is supposed to help it even just a little bit. We'll have to see if that's actually true when it does indeed come out. And then finally, Nike's self-lacing shoes have been bricked. Yes, my friends, we are living in an era where your shoes need firmware. And if you don't have it, they don't work the way they're supposed to. This is the self-lacing sneakers from Nike and they don't work with Nike's official Android app. It just, you can't, can't do it. So spend $350 on shoes, can't even use them because gosh dang it, we're living in the apocalypse. That's all I have for hot news today. I'm gonna to wrap it up there. Let me know what you thought was the best story. Are you okay with what happened with AMD? What do you think of me breaking a graphics card over my head? It's probably dead. I should probably check that. Don't forget that we still have our 2080 Ti giveaway going on for smashing that 200,000 subscriber goal and the one terabyte NVMe that goes with that as well. Big thanks to Woodware for making that happen. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too.